Hello and welcome to episode 5 of New Esports TV for the 2017 season. I'm Ty Stedman. Um, it has been a very, very busy and productive uh, week and a half, I guess. Uh, this is the fifth episode in what, what, two, two weeks or so. Um, of course, we've been to Fordham, we've been to Bell Swans, we've been to Walls End, we're going to West Walls End this week. Um, it's just a very uh, busy time over the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's not, and it's not that it's a bad time. It's been good, but it's it's been a real tired, um, long days. Especially the last couple of days have been long days. I'm very very sunburnt. Um, my advice to you for the next couple of months at least is always wear sun protection. Um, definitely. So, we've been to West Wall's End yesterday, which is now two days ago, it's now past midnight. Um, so we've been to West Wall's End, we've been to Wall's End, so we're going to go through that. Uh, first of all, we're just going to do a quick roundup of any other news. Uh, Belmont Swansea United played uh, Valentine FC uh, on Saturday. Uh, Bell Swans drawing 1-1 under 17s for Bell Swans drawing with Valentine's under 16s. Uh, Bell Swans 19th. Uh, well, let's talk about that a bit more. Uh, great result there for the Bell Swans 17s team. I, I don't actually, I don't really know the lineup there at Bell Swans for the 17s, but um, Valo would have a decent 16s team that you know an NPL club. So that's that's a decent result at this stage of the season, this early on to get a draw against NPL. Uh, team is pretty good, so they can hold their heads up high for that one. Uh, Bell Swans 19s and 23s both went down 3 0 to Valentine's under 18s and under 20s, respectively. Um, again, the, I don't look too much into results um, in the third week of January. Uh, last but not least, Belmont Swansea 1 defeated by Edgeworth 5 in, in the first grade fixture. Um, Bell Swans goal to Josh Hall. Um, now I'm told this one, Bell Swans just, I mean, outclassed on the day, obviously. Uh, they came, you know, they, they battled hard and then eventually I think they, they threw on some, some youth talent towards the end, some upcoming players, and the game sort of got away from them. But um, I'm being told, I've been told that Josh Rufo is very, very happy with the way things went uh, on Saturday out there at Bell Swans, so that, that is a good sign. Definitely. South Cardiff uh, played Valentine. Did I say Bell Swans played Valentine? I meant Bell Swans played Edgeworth. So Bell Swans 17s drew with Edgeworth 16s. Um, and that is that is an indication of the weekend I am having. Just forgetting names, forgetting clubs, forgetting all of it. South Cardiff Valentine 1-1 um, one, one in the under 17s. Uh, South Cardiff's goal to Josh Meeks. Uh, in the under 19s, also 1 1, with South Cardiff's goal being to. I better check that, but you know, I don't actually know it off the top of my head. You'd think I would, but I don't. Um, Kyle Bauer scoring that goal. Southie winning 23s 2 0 over Valentine's under 20s. And um, Valentine winning 2 1 in the first grade fixture. Troy Runge with the. Uh, with the goal for South Cardiff. And again, there's more new names everywhere. I look new names, so I apologise for any pronunciations. I apologise for spelling errors. I apologise for not knowing who people are because at this stage of the year, it is just madness. <clears throat> so we're going to get into uh, the main portion of uh, this show, this week's show, this tonight's show. There will be more shows this week. Um, we will be going to West Walls End later in the week. Uh, to chat with Gary Rowe and some of his players. Um, and that's what we're going to go to right now. We're going to talk about West Wall's End and the Fortin Redbacks yesterday. And before I do that, why not go through and just turn to the uh, the ever great screen we got here at New East Sports TV and get this quick little two minute video. I really wish this would loop, but it doesn't loop. Let's talk about this weekend's games. Under 17s, West Walls end 4, defeating the Fortin Redbacks nil. Um, I'm not going to do what I did last year. I'm not going to sit here and read out every little fine detail. But a new look team for Fortin, 
Um, only Blake McDonald in goals, who we're going to mention, um, is left from last year, I believe. I don't recognise any other names there in that Fortin team. So um, they do have other players to come back in. It was a combined 15s and 17s team that went down to West Wall's end, so definitely not a result to write home about. Um, a fairly sloppy opening, that's probably a bit harsh at this time of year, but um, the game did get sort of get, got going, and when it did get going, Westy controlled it. Um, Blake Chiapara, definitely one of their best on the day in midfield. Uh, Fortin's front four, they all looked probably, I don't, from definitely from the under-15s team, I can't confirm that, I don't, I don't even know what their names were. Um, I do have the team sheet, I can go check that, but um, again, Fortin had a very young looking team, so I think they're always going to find it pretty tough. But I tell you what, uh, Blake McDonald in goals, um, in a 4 0 defeat, man of the match for me, probably man of the match for a lot of people. Um, even West Wall's end fans I heard walking behind me saying, you know, this is the same keeper they had last year, he was good last year, he's good now. And uh, that's a real, um, that's a real, uh, I don't even know the word, it's real good. It's good. There you go. Um, this is not Fox Sports. I'm telling you that right now. Um, so yeah, Blake McDonald pulling, putting in a huge shift in goals. Uh, Kai Drayton, Sam Wyburn creating a few chances, but McDonald just kept stopping them. Um, now Blake Arthur making his debut for West Wall's End. Toronto Wobber, of course, last year for the under-17s. Um, decent player at Toronto, but never really stole headlines or anything like that, but he definitely stole headlines yesterday with a two-goal performance. Um, didn't get man of the match, of course, but nonetheless, um, if you're going to give the man of the match to anyone else but the goalkeeper, Fordham, you'd give it to him. Uh, two goals for him, Blake Chiapara also getting a goal, and Kai Drayton getting a goal. Um, some tap-ins were missed, some chances were missed, West Walls and I thought could have ran away with it. Um, Callum Rowe, a couple good runs down the sideline. All in all, at the end of the day, a tough welcome to some of the new players for Fortin um, as our video loops. Look at that, that's wonderful. Um, a tough welcome to new FM football for some of these Fortin players. Um, but again, it's a trial match, and again, they've still got players to come in. But um, And I do have to be... I, I don't know if it's harsh or if it's... I mean, it's real. It's real. I have to be real and say, you know, Fortin needing 17-inch players at this stage. It's a little bit of a worry. Um, I'm hoping they get them. Uh, there are a couple of clubs um, that are rumoured to be having trouble getting some players for 15s and 17s. And, um, you know, I was at Wall's End today where apparently they could have t they could have probably built two teams of 17-inch players. Uh, the same at Cahiba. Um, same at West Wall's End, really, so, you know, it is it is a bit of a worry, but it is what it is, and Sporton will probably most likely get a team together by the start of the season, um, obviously, but it still is a bit of a concern. 3-2-1 vote, Blake McDonald 3, Blake Chiaparo 2, and Blake Arthur 1. And, yeah, as I said, um, Sporton, not, not, not really... Um, too much of a judgmental performance based on the fact that they didn't really have a full team on the park. For West Wall's End, I actually said today, I said it to um, I said it to one of the coaches at Wall's End, I said nobody, you, know, you can't really write off a team on poor results in pre-season, but you can definitely praise a team for good results in pre-season. Um, you know, if, if a team's playing like crap in pre-season, it's not too much of a worry. There's time to turn around. But if a team started their first game of the calendar year like West Wall's End did in the 17s yesterday and they looked good, um, it's definitely a good sign of things to come. And uh, West Wall's End, I think they'll want to carry on from where they left off with top four teams in, in the under-17s. And especially on under-19s, under that's where we're going to go now. We're going to have some highlights come up here, hopefully. Um, confusion off the field before this started, and again, I have to be, I have to be harsh. Um, Ford and I think are getting onto this, but they do need a team manager because uh, not having the team sheets filled out at all is is not a good look. And 
um, that's coming from, you know, that's obviously coming from somebody who reads out the team sheet over a PA system, so it does help me. But again, officially, um, if this game was, was an actual game, not a trial, they would be fined. So um, I have to be real about that. Um, nonetheless, a lot of returning Forden players from the 17s now in the 19s, so it's, it's a good sign, good, good experience learned last year. Um, it wasn't a good day for them though. It'd take no less than eight minutes for a goal. James Barnes broke away for Westy. Uh, seemingly tripped up by Blake McDonald. I looked at the video and the video will probably come up now. Um, I thought it was a dive, but um, apparently Blake McDonald did admit to the referee that he did trip him, so I, I don't know. Uh, for my money it was a dive. Live I thought it was a penalty, so I guess you could say 50-50. James Barnes did go down pretty easily, but the, the finish was, was decent. Sandy McDonald the wrong way. Again, Blake McDonald backing up for 19s. Two, two games in a row. Um, Bluebells put the pressure on. They're looking, looking just much more game prepared, uh, Steve Thompson's side. Two injuries for West Wall's end, though, a bit, a bit worrying. Jared Crawford, uh, the fullback. Uh, I don't actually know what happened to him. I don't know when it happened. I just overheard someone say that Jared Crawford got injured. Um, more of a worry was uh, Josh Knight's injury, which was an ankle injury, and then it flared up as as time ticked by, and he ended up um, leaving to go go to see a GP or something like that. So um, that's a little bit of a worry for them. Um, Knighty would be, I mean, it's still early. Like you know, there's still two months, or a month and a half until the season starts. I'm pretty sure any ankle knock will be a couple of weeks at best, but you know, this is a stage of the season where you don't really need any injuries, um, especially long-term ones. Hopefully Knight will be bouncing back from that. I'm sure he will. Um, back on the field, it was a physical game. Some real hard-hitting actions and good good hits. For an old-school rugby league fan like myself, before it got ruined by the whole shoulder charge being kicked out of the game and um, just pretentious people ruining rugby league, um, back when it was a real sport, well not a real sport, that's a bit harsh isn't it, back when it was, go, go watch 90s Origin and compare it to now and get it back to me. Um, some good hits in this game, um, a lot of cards, six cards in a trial match, um, card happy referee, gotta say it. Uh, one of those cards in the 34th minute might show it here, uh, Will Schofield coming in fairly heavily on a Westy player. Um, hand just lost possession, it was Brock Taylor and then he just really hacked him from behind. Um, I agreed and a few people agreed that if this was a normal game, Will Schofield would have been sent off, um, which would have been unfortunate. You know, I, I like Will Schofield, he's a good player, but again, um, you, know, you can't be making tackles like that in a trial match. Uh, Josh Davies was Fortin's main threat in the final third and probably really their only threat in the final third at times. Didn't see a lot of the ball. Lackluster defensive line for Fortin. Um, they had a couple of young guys, probably from the 17s I'd say, sort of filling in and I don't know if they're going to be there all year or what the situation is, how many 19s they've got to come in, but um, at this stage it's still very early days. But their defence just wasn't up. Like this Westy team are very, very good. Uh, let's, let's be honest about that. Uh, a good cross by Brock Taylor set up Jared Hayter, but he'd miss it. Um, second half, lead was double, 44th minute. A poor turnover from Fortin, and a good ball from Brock Taylor. Great vision to find Dylan Hogg, I believe it was, into Dan Roxby, into the back of the net with a header. Um, or oh, should I say a volley, actually. We'll see it here, hopefully. Um, 12 minutes later, 3-0. Jaden Lee's quite cross, cross, cross. Cross is what I'm looking for. Headed in by James Barnes for his second goal. Um, Barnes missed a chance to steal a hat trick. Nick Bull had a couple chances. Um, Westy became complacent though, and they did allow Fortin to score a goal. Leighton Burke would find Josh Davies, whose speed allowed him to just to just get towards the keeper and just chip it over Aaron Taylor right into the back of the net. Good goal for Josh Davies. Had a chance to make it free too and make the ending interesting, but it wasn't to be. And then. Um, he tried to redeem himself with a free kick that wasn't really good. Um, good player though, Josh Davies. Not Fortin's day, but let's talk about West Wall's end. Under-19s, 
at this stage and you know my thoughts will change week by week when I see the other team but at this stage they're the Premiership favourites for me um, great team on paper hell of a lot of potential should just get better as weeks go by and um, I'm seeing a few 19 teams obviously I know the situation around the league um, I can't see too many teams at this rate that can really match these guys on their day so that's the challenge, that's the challenge issued on behalf of New Esports to the rest of the comp. Um, these guys are probably going to be the, the pacemakers, pace setters in the 19s. Might need pacemakers to deal with some of these some of these pacey players, some of these quality players. James Barnes, men of the match, Brock Taylor with two, Josh Davies one. We move on to the under 23s. I should have a timer, I don't know how long this is going for. I apologise if I just talk and talk for hours. It's what I do, probably what I do best. Forden took an early lead against West Wall's end. A very strong West Wall. It must be said, Brady Broderick scored that goal. Gave the visitors their first lead of the day in any grade. Um, Westy scored next. Jordan, jo Jordan Van Kemenade getting his name on the score sheet. I didn't actually see this goal, so I don't, can't really comment too much on it. Shortly before half-time, Ty Jones converted a penalty, despite James Wan getting a hand to the ball. Um, couldn't save it, the Fortin goalkeeper. The only noticeable action in the second half in what was, again, a lacklustre trial. Uh, Ty Jones bagging another goal to steal the win. Fortin went with youth off the bench. Davies, Schofield, uh, Jackson Watkins as well. Seems like a player they're going to um, probably try out in 23s over the next couple of weeks. Um, Westy too good. Uh, I tell you what, this West Wall's end team in the 23s, and I think um, what they were doing, what it looked like they were doing, and what a couple of their players said they were doing, was having a first and a second team, and then they're going to switch it next week. But um, I spoke to Gary Rowe about that, and he said the complete opposite, and said that um, they're pretty um, comfortable where players are in each grade. So I don't know, it's all a bunch of mind games at this time of year. Uh, Ty Jones got man of the match, Connor Mason with two, Jared Jones with one, Connor Mason being a Fortin player as well. I uh, just thought I'd add that in. First grade, West Wall's end, one defeated by the Fortin Redbacks, three. Um, this was probably the game of the weekend, definitely the game of the weekend. This was, um, I mean, it's not, it's it's week one of pre-season trials, so it wasn't exactly a brilliant game, but this one actually back and forth. It's a nice game to sort of watch. Um, Westy, again, as I was saying, the two teams, but we're not going to talk about that now. Um, the game started fairly different to normal. Um, I might chuck this in. Uh, the, the referee involved, I, I don't think she'd like me chucking this in, but um, literally within 10 seconds, the referee was hit with the ball and knocked over. So I've never seen a game start like that. So that's sort of, I don't know, um, if maybe we should do a that shoot house segment or something like that. Um, but to her credit, she got straight up and continued to referee the game, so um, good stuff there. Um, you know, I don't, want, don't really want to see anyone get hit in the face with a ball or anything like that. I've been there, done that. It's not a good feeling. Fortin looked decent going forward when the chances came. Uh, Subit, Subit looking very good uh, down. Jamie Subit, of course, that is. Um, and he was someone I talked to in those interviews. Someone I fought last year, um, I fought didn't really reach his potential and he, he was, he was injured he was injured a bit last year and I think he's got a lot more to offer this year so I think Subi can definitely be in um, for a bigger year at Fordham. Um, Nathan McAllister too, very good game. Uh, he was brought down by Cameron Aspinall in the um, in in the box, I was going to say in the bench. No. Um, on live viewing a penalty for my money and I'll show you it here a fairly soft call, I think, if given. Um, I think it was the right call in the end. Uh, the referee probably didn't have the best game in the world. There were there were boil points or you know um, heat points or something points um, of the game. Flash points. That's the word I'm looking for. There was flash points um, where I thought maybe maybe a yellow card should have been brought out. I mean, it's only a trial, but you did see the 19s. There were yellows, so. Um, you know, these are first graders that are going to be, especially in pre-season, they're going to be hacking the hell out of each other at times because they know they can probably get away with it at this time of the year. But again, it wasn't that bad. It was. It did get out of hand a couple of times. I thought it's going to get a little bit of niggle here and there. Um, 
27th minute, Fortin took the lead. Jesse Smith making a dangerous run. Uh, the ball put in by Josh Benaquista. Um, Jacob Bartlett headed home to add to the visitors' lead. A good youngster, Jacob Bartlett. Good to see him getting a goal. Um, after the break, oh no, pardon me, before the break, um, and we're going to show these goals, so I've got to slow down a little bit. Bryson Cox scoring um, what was the goal of the day, a screamer in the left side of the net. Goal of the weekend for me. Um, a really good goal to put West Wall's end back in it, but not to be outdone. Nathan McAllister, the Fortin captain, won it all. Won, won the game for them. Um, ball came to him, unmarked, poor defending, just leaving one of Fortin's best players wide open, and he just looked up and banged it in off the post. Can't go wrong with that in the 82nd minute. McAllister, man of the match, Jesse Smith with two, Bryson Cox with one, and a good way for Fortin to end the day at West Wall's end. And um, really good to catch up with both clubs. Fortin, of course, I was up there uh, last week for the, um, for the interviews and that, and they've got a lot of new faces there, especially in the lower grades, so I'm really hoping it works out for Fortin this year. Um, especially 17s and 19s, it would be good to see them get a bit more success. Um, it makes football more enjoyable. Uh, we'll move on to Sunday's games yesterday now. Um, Walls End playing Walls End in, in the lower two grades, intra club game, so we're not going to talk too much about it. There's not going to be any highlights, there was no filming, it wasn't really, it wasn't a massive day of football or anything like that. Um, Westy and Fortin was, it was like a proper match day, it was really enjoyable. Um, this was more of a laid back sort of um, chance to get to know all the new Walls End players, and there are a lot. Um, so the under-17s for Walls End defeating the under-15s by four goals to one. <clears throat> under-17s are favourites, but there's a lot of, um, I don't know, hopes and... Um, yeah, it's general hopes that the 15s would sort of take the game to them. And I think at the end of the day, I did speak with the 15s coach. And it's not a grade that we're going to be focusing too much on this year because it's on a different, a different match day, different venue to where we'll be every week. But... Um, nonetheless, I'll be keeping an eye on the results and Wall's End I think will be a decent team because um, they've got a decent squad coming together there and a bit of confidence and uh, they'll probably go a long way. Um, and it's good to see Wall's End have that many players in the 15s and have to turn players away. It's a good, good sign for the club, a lot of people won't play there. Um, the 15s would take the lead, a, a rare mistake from Cameron Jefferson Bill in goals, leading to uh, Mitchell Wilson scoring uh, the first goal for Walls End FC this season in any grade um, against against his own club though, but nonetheless a goal. Um, it'd be short-lived, Luke Robert getting one back for the 17s immediately and then he'd put him into the lead not long after that. 3-1 um, after an own goal off of Kyle Barwick. Dangerous break from the 17s, they're starting to look the better team at this rate. At this stage, Ben Smith sealed their win with a curled shot into the net. Uh, despite a decent performance from the 15s, James Heath getting goals. Good performance, but not to be on the day. I believe they've got Magic next week. I did meet the 15s coach after the game, the nice guy. Um, Frank, I believe. Um, yeah, a decent team. And um, I think it'd be a good comp. But uh, of course, we're not going to. We're going to be at first grade games. We're going to be at you know, senior match days and that. But I'm going to be interested to see how the results go. Um, it's going to be a decent comp, I think. All in all, um, the 17s team, I'm looking at the list now, and there was no team sheets, so I sort of had to go and hassle coaches and people for for names and whatnot, but nonetheless, I got them. Um, thanks to the coaches, thanks to the parents for, for providing names while the players were out there um, doing their thing. Um, not too many players left from Fortin's 17s last... Uh, Fortin, Walls End 17s last year. Uh, five of them to be exact are uh, Jefferson Bilbin goals. Gabriel Baron Smith's back. Um, he did move to New Lambton, he's back at Wall's End. Angus Hall, Travis Lockwood, and Cooper McLean. Um, they're the only ones left, so there's a lot of newcomers. But a lot of these players, I'm being told, have been playing for Wall's End since under sixes. So that is that's a massive, massive props. I can't think of a club in the in the in New FM that have any anything like that. Um, they probably have players that have played, but like literally this many players at the one club since under sixes, and there are. I just went through 
I went through every club in my head real quickly then. There are no clubs that have probably eight, you know, I don't know, six, seven players that have played together since under sixes. Um, that's what I got told anyway. Um, newcomers to the club that sort of familiar to us here on New Sports TV. Really only one are Ryan King from Lakes. Um, and he's also joined the under 19s. We'll move on to the under 19s in a sec, but um, I'm trying to remember Callum Garbett from Lakes as well joining Walls End. Um, and there are a couple Lakes 17s from last year going to Toronto. There's a couple spread out, um, which is funny because they did get told they would be probably get, getting another position at Lakes, but things happen. Um, nonetheless, uh, Ryan King seems very happy at Wall's End, and Callum Garber, good to see him there too. Um, I think they'll fit in just really well. Um, in the reserve fixture, which under 23s versus under 19s, 8-0 uh, was the score, but really, um, let's not get too you know, let's not think this is the end of the world for Wall's Ends under 19s because it damn well isn't. Um, so goals to Callum Caldwell, free goals. I tell you what, um, Scottish, I believe. I really hope he's not Pom. He's Scottish. Um, he's been playing zone league. I met him the other night. Good, good guy, and um, he's he's a decent decent um, addition. I don't know if he'll be playing 23s. I mean, he come off the bench for first, but. Scored three goals within probably the first 10 or 15 minutes and uh, looked really good. And um, Nick Evans scored, Ethan Coker scored, Joel Blundell, and a number 16. Whoever was number 16, I don't know. The only number 16 I have is Luke Robert from the under 17s. I don't know if it was him. I don't really. I don't know who these players are yet. I'm still putting names to faces. So whoever scored those two goals, I don't know who they are. 8-0 uh, the final score there. Uh, Walls ends under 23s. I tell you what, this um, that's a decent performance to start the year and um, we'll see how they go. But, you know, they nearly made finals last year and I've been told that Walls end are aiming to make the finals. It, I don't think they really... They, well, they don't want to keep it a secret if someone's told me because I don't keep secrets very well. Um, I do if you tell me to keep it, but if you just say it to me and... Don't say to keep it a secret. I don't. I generally don't. Um, Walls End saying that they want to make the finals in all of the of the lower grades, 23s, 19s, 17s, and I guess 15s as well. Um, and that's, I mean, that's where every club should be aiming for. Like, I like that idea. Uh, the the Walls End 19s. Um, I mean, they've still got players to come in. Uh, and for me, it's two big losses. They've lost Jackson Manning and Darcy Hall. It looks like they're going to be playing senior football in 23s and perhaps even first. Take those two out. Those two cogs in central defence. Um, look up cogs. It's, it's, not, it's not a bad word. Um, crucial defenders. Take them out and any team's going to be really struggling to, to put together the pieces. They'll work it out, I'm sure. Um, Craig Salembus had the 17s last year. Uh, a lot of these players were in that. Um, Jacob Ray, uh, Strazari, um, Carvelis was in there. So, not that many actually, only three of them, but again, it was Craig Salembus. He knows, he knows this all too well. He knows where his team was last year at this time, um, getting really just not been up to the challenge of match situations, but then he turned it all around in pre-season and he took the 17s all the way to the semi-finals. Of course, the coach doesn't do it all. The players did a lot, and I know Craig I know Craig very well and he'd agree with that, that it was his players that, that did that, but Craig would also say that it's pre-season, it's early, and uh, he's not worried at all. He just, they'll find some players, they'll, they'll fill those holes if there are holes, and um, I'm sure you'll see a good team from Walls End's 19s. Um, there's some good players here, Jacob Reyes, Drizari's good. Uh, Carvelis, and you know, there's some others that are coming in here. This um, Matthias Shoemaker has got came in in high regard. Um, I've been told he's one to watch at Walls End this year in the 17s, 19s, and um, I've had people tell, tell me that he's, he may very well play first, um, not coaches, but just onlookers. Um, you'd know it, wouldn't you? This uh, camera is running out of battery, which 
is really, really bad. So we're going to try and hurry. That's what I'm going to try and do. My apologies if this cuts out, I'll edit it, but I'm going to try and hurry up here. First grade, Walls End FC 2, defeated by the Newcastle Suns 5. Uh, Walls End begin a new era under Chris Gallagher. Um, he's back against a very tough Newcastle Suns side. Um, we've got John Majorowski out on the field, I mean, come on. Um, this is going to be a very tough challenge to start pre-season. Madge, it didn't take him long to get on the score sheet. I know Madge from, from a while ago, actually. Been, I've been a big fan of Madge for years. Um, don't know if he's going back to the Jaffers or staying with the Suns, but anyway, they're playing the Masso Cup next week. They looked really good. Uh, they had goals to Liam Mercer, Alex Palotti with two, and Majorowski with, with one. 5-2, Trent Milton and John Oliveres scoring for Wall's End. Um, the Suns, they look good. Um, they'll be favourites for Zone Premier League, in my opinion, at this early stage. And the Masso Cup, they'll definitely be going there with intentions to sort of cause a little bit of a stir against some of the um, bigger name Macedonian teams. And I said, I was saying, I actually messaged one of their players um, today, talking to them, um, and said, you know, it would be so good to see um, the Suns draw magic in the FA Cup. That'd be something to see the two uh, Macedonian backed clubs. Um, I know the FFA won't want me talking about ethnic football, but um, these clubs are Macedonian backed. Um, that's not saying they don't have any non Macedonian players, it's not like that anymore, but um, you know, you've got your Majorowskis and all that sort of. Um, all those sort of players, and I tell you what, it's, it's good. It's good. That's that's how football was founded in Australia. So I I don't think you know I'm trying not to be um, I'm not blasting ethnic football at all. You know, um, Olympics Greek, Azuri is Italian. Italian. You know, it's that's that's football. Um, I'm a traditionalist, I guess. Uh, the Suns better side on the day. Walled end. All right, apologies for that uh, little break there. Um, camera runs out of battery. Um, this isn't a professional setup at all, is it? Anyway, um, I don't really know where I was up to. I was talking about the Suns, I think. They'll be favourites for Zone Premier League. Cause a bit of a stir at the, the Masso Cup next week. And uh, good luck to them for the season. I really like I really like what they're doing there at the Suns. Really um, professional sort of outfit for that, that competition. Um, I think they'd be almost suitable for New FM going on first grade. Of course, um, they definitely need better ground, jun you know, juniors, all that sort of stuff. But um, on their first grade team could beat many New FM teams. I think on their day, um, see what happens in the FA Cup. I guess um, we move on, and we talk about Walls End now. Um, a, a real a start of a new era. I mean, this is a Walls End side without Hodson, Gazard, Cook. Um, Wheeler is gone as well. Um, just names, names and names and more names. Luke Jennings is gone from last year in goals. This is a huge, huge changeover for Walls End. Um, I, for one, am not writing them as title contenders. I don't know if they are. Um, they definitely want to push for the top four. I don't think you want to be in this comp about wanting to push for the top four. That's what it's all about in the end. Um, it's too early. Way, way too early to to say anything more than that. Um, Dylan Merrick in goals. Good to see. Uh, good to see young Reggie, as he's known out there, get, get a start in the first grade goals today. Um, you know, the Cooksill Trio, Matt Williams, LA, Luke Alexander, uh, Big Mal Hinchcliffe as well. Um, you know, Kyle McAridge, Isaac Reeves, good players, good players on paper. So definitely not, not a write-off team or anything like that, but we'll see how they go um, over the next few weeks building up pre-season. Uh, they just outplayed today and um, just lacked a bit of fitness, I thought, a bit of game fitness. Um, Jackson Manning and Darcy Hall getting getting a good go off the bench as well. Jack Lydiard as well. So good to see some youngsters um, get a run off of Chris Gallagher's bench, and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of that this season. 
um, as the weeks pass by. So that is pretty much that. Um, I'm tired, very, very tired. It's been a long weekend, but it's been a good weekend, and um, we may have some football midweek. Uh, Lakes playing Singleton on Tuesday night, first grade only fixture, but nonetheless a fixture to watch, I guess. Um, not sure if I'm going to be heading there or heading to another club and doing interviews. I will be heading to West Wall's End on West uh, on West Wall's End night. On Wednesday night, that's that's the name of the day. That's the name of the day of the week is Wednesday night. That's when I'll be heading to West Wall's End. Um, this has probably been very ugly, but this is me being very tired. Uh, it is good to be back though. It's very very good to be back and um, plenty and plenty and plenty and plenty of new faces, new names to remember. Um, it's all a bit much for me at this moment, but nonetheless we'll figure it out and um, we'll go from there, won't we? Uh, next week, nothing on Saturday just yet, so I'm hoping to find the game next Saturday. Next Sunday is Fortin versus Maitland, um, unless something else pops up. So there's still loads and loads of games to come in the pre-season, there's still a lot to get through. But we've got through this much so far and it's been good. It's been really, really good uh, to be back to shake off the cobwebs and I apologise, I apologise now for how bad this video is or was or you know um, it is 1am in the morning and I've watched seven games of soccer in two days and I'm sunburnt and I'm tired so it does happen unfortunately but we move on with it and um, I will see you in episode 6 which will be the West Walls End uh, feature uh, later in the week, looking very, looking very much forward to that one. Looking forward to catching up with Gary Rowe and, and his team um, after their first trial um, ended in defeat. They'll definitely be looking to to see how they go in the second trial, which is coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, nonetheless, thank you for watching this episode five of New Sports TV for the 2017 season. I am Ty Stedman. I will see you in the next episode.